Hi, I'm Andy Salmon with CNC USA, the underwater photography company. I'm an underwater photography instructor and a professional underwater photographer. I'd like to talk to you about O-ring maintenance and lubrication today to make sure that your seals keep water out of your system. With CNC, we use a, a blue silicone type of an O-ring. It's very important that with that type of O-ring, you use the CNC formulated grease. Any other type of grease will cause the O-ring to get spongy and not seal correctly. O-rings have three different areas that we need to consider to make sure that we get a proper seal. This is the O-ring remover tool from CNC that comes with all of our equipment and we recommend its use so that you don't damage the O-ring when removing the O-ring from its groove. So the three different areas we need to take a look at are of course the O-ring itself, the O-ring groove, which goes around the back of this DX2G housing here, and then of course the third part is the sealing surface or the outer part of the housing in this particular case where the o-ring is going to seal into. So what we need to do is make sure that all three of these areas are clean and free of defects, sand, uh, debris, hair, any type of material that could cause the seal to break. Once the seal breaks, of course, water can come in and then your equipment is destroyed. So this is very, very important. By the way, just one more note, o-ring maintenance, proper o-ring maintenance and care only takes a couple of minutes. So there's no reason to rush through this. The O-ring itself is a soft silicone, and in some cases with other products, it would be a soft rubber. The silicone O-rings um, require just a little bit more grease than most of the rubber O-rings. However, we don't want to over-grease anything. Okay? So first, we want to make sure that they're clean and free of defects. And the easiest way to do that is to get under good light and observe. Taking a look at the O-ring, I don't see any nicks. I don't feel any cuts or abrasions or anything foreign in the O-ring. Now, I'm not stretching the O-ring. I'm only running it through my fingertips. I'm going to set the o-ring aside for just a moment, it looks clean, and I'm going to inspect the o-ring groove. Same thing, no defects, no nicks, no hairs, no pieces of sand or trap particles, and of course the third surface, the sealing surface around the outside, around the housing of the DX2G in this particular case. Once I've done that, and I'm, I'm happy that all these surfaces are clean, I'm going to go ahead and lightly lubricate the o-ring, put it into the o-ring groove, and then seal up the housing. It doesn't take a lot of grease, but like I said, with the blue O-rings, it takes just a little more grease than you might be used to if you're used to the black rubber style of O-ring. Again, I'm just going to run the O-ring through my fingertips. I'm not going to stretch it to deform it. I'm going to make sure I've got a nice light coat of the CNC O-ring grease on the blue O-rings. I'm going to put the O-ring into place. Then, with just a little bit of grease left on my fingertips, I'm just going to run that around the ceiling surface just to check it by feel. No nicks, no cuts. Wipe the extra ring grease off and we'll close the housing up. One last thing, if the o-ring groove is dirty then we want to take some type of a clean towel or some people use q-tips. I prefer makeup applicators when you can get them because they don't use the, leave the white hairs that q-tips will leave behind and wipe that o-ring groove out. So that's it. O-ring care and maintenance in a nutshell. Now your camera should be ready to go underwater.